yo yo people are going i don't know it's a king boss welcome back so today i'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the raspberry pi 5 that's my raspberry pi 5 there so what do i have here i've got my micro hdmi cable i'm going to put that to one side for now i've got my micro sd card here and i have the adapter i'm going to plug this in and show you how to set everything up from the very very beginning next i have this is the USB-C power supply. This is a very big power supply compared to what it used to be before. USB-C gives you 27 watts. Now I have seen articles and videos where it says if you have an iPhone or an iPad or an iMac charger, that should work fine. But I would always recommend using the original one from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. An official case, and this Raspberry Pi 5 case actually comes with the cooling fan there. So like my Raspberry Pi 4 video, I won't need to add those massive stupid fans next to it. I can simply use what comes with the case. The Raspberry Pi 5. This device is the four gigabyte version. Again, like I said, for the Raspberry Pi 4, which I only got in 2023 as well. I don't think one or two gigabytes is good enough for me. And I do think personally for me, eight gigabytes is overkill. Let's have a quick look at the specifications here. So it says we have a 64 bit quad core processor. This is A76, I believe the raspberry pi 4 had an a72 we still have four gigabytes of ddr4 x ram that's more than good enough for a single board computer in my opinion again this is the size of a credit card uh, we have two micro hdmi ports and they both support up to 4k 60 frames now this is not something i think i'll need honestly my two monitors in front of me are like 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames so this should be more than enough we have two USB 3.0 ports and we have two USB 2.0 ports. We have two to four lane connectors for camera. So what that means is that we can use the CSI and DSI port on the Raspberry Pi. We can use either one of them for camera and either one for display now. It doesn't have to be specific to display or camera. We have gigabit ethernet. We have Wi-Fi 802.11b, G, N, A, C, Bluetooth 5 power over ethernet so poe means power over ethernet which simply means i can power my raspberry pi 5 from an ethernet cable if i have the correct hardware i have a pci express expansion connector so keep what this means is i can connect pci express devices graphics cards storage network whatever it is i can use pci express to do it i've got a 5 volt, 5 amp USB-C power supply, which gives us roughly 25 watts. However, on the box it says 27, so it fluctuates. It goes between 20 something, well, let's say 23 to 27. That's understandable. So those are the specs of the Raspberry Pi 5. So here we are. Let's peel here to get in the box. There we go. Raspberry Pi 5 is being exposed finally. Right, oh, drop that. Let's see what we have here on the front. Let's see if I can point these things out to you. It says I should hold it like this, but for some reason my brain just tells me USB port should be on the left, don't know why. This is what the Raspberry Pi 5 looks like. And in comparison, this is what the Raspberry Pi 4 looks like. Very, very similar devices, as you can see. We do have a few more chips on the Raspberry Pi 5 than we do on the 4. We have, I know that's the Wi-Fi. Obviously that's the processor, CSI and DSI port here. Can be used interchangeably. We have the micro, let's put my hand there, the micro HDMI ports, one there and one here. We have the USB-C power connector. And when I move around here, I've got my gigabit ethernet port on the left, USB three in the middle there, and USB two ports here and here. I typically tend to use USB two for mouse and keyboard because mouse and keyboard doesn't need a lot of data being sent. If I'm using a camera or something that needs quite a bit of data to be transferred, let's say an external hard drive, or if I'm booting from um, an SSD and I'm going from USB to SATA, I would definitely 1 million percent use the USB 3 port instead. On this side, we have the 40 GPIO pins, so that's general purpose input output. And all these do, these allow me to interface with normal electronic components. So like the Raspberry Pi, Pico, Pico W, and all the other microcontrollers around, I can actually program my components and control them from here so this is a microcomputer and a microcontroller in one so the differences are i might as well teach you this a microcomputer is something like this is simply a small computer micro meaning small a microcontroller is a small controller the difference is computers do loads of data processing so because this has four gigabytes of ram a quad core processor 
um, and, and all that extra stuff, it can do the hardware. Whereas a microcontroller simply controls other devices, actuators, input devices, output devices, so on and so forth. So this can do both. It's a microcontroller because it has a GPIO pins that I can control other devices and it's a microcomputer because it's a small computer and I'm going to plug my HDMI ports into here, my mouse, my keyboard, so on and so forth. So on the very back, we only have the micro SD card slot. When these devices just came out, when I used my, um, the Raspberry Pi 1 and 2, this was a spring-loaded thing. So be careful. This is not spring-loaded anymore. Get rid of that last part. Simply put the micro SD card in here and you should be good to go. So now that we've been around the device, I'm going to show you guys how to set this device up from scratch here is my micro sd card slot here on the right this thing on the left is just an adapter an adapter that can go into some cameras most computers desktops most card readers will fit this and not this i have seen computers that will fit this so just double check what you have but this is the most common sd card adapter i know so I'll simply pop this out and all i'm gonna do let's pop this out as well And you're going to put this, the reading side up, reading side up for both. Simply slide this in. That's it. You're going to plug this into your computer and I'm going to show you the steps you need to follow. This is me on my desktop. And the first thing you need to do, you need to open your browser and go to the internet. Now, any browser should work fine. You could use any search engine as well, but I'm going to just use Google because that's what I'm used to. So I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi OS, simply type in Raspberry Pi OS. These are the same steps you follow if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, 4 or 5 or anything beyond that. And I'm going to go to where it says Raspberry Pi OS. That's the first link that comes up click on that and from here we have quite a few options i'm not going to go over all these options again i went over all of them already in my raspberry pi 4 video but simply scroll down the page to see all the options i recommend going for the easy peasy option which is going to be this first one here which says install raspberry pi os using raspberry pi imager so this is not the typical imager that we're used to a typical imager would be one where you download the iso file and then you use the imager to write the iso file to the micro sd card slot we are going to be writing an ISO. However, this program is going to download everything that we need. So I'm going to click on download for Windows because I have a Windows PC. If you have a Mac OS laptop, um, you click on that one there. Download for Mac OS. If you have a Linux machine, download for Ubuntu for x86. This should work for other distributions as well. For example, I like Zorin OS and I also like Linux Mint. This should work fine for them because they're based on Ubuntu. But just try it, see what works. I'm going to go for Windows one here. It starts downloading and it finishes within seconds because it's a very tiny file so i'm going to click on that to open it and let's see what comes up you might not be able to see this now but it's asking me if i'm sure i want to make changes with this device i'm just going to click yes this is going to come up i'm going to click install i'm not going to change anything because this is let's just go with the default installation for now i'm going to click finish and it's going to actually run raspberry pi imager so this is raspberry pi imager here so let me make this bigger yeah that's a bit bigger so it says raspberry pi device choose device so you click on that first option here that says choose device choose your appropriate device i'm using a raspberry pi 5 for this one in my previous video i use a raspberry pi 4 but this has all the raspberry pis even the raspberry pi 0 raspberry pi 0 w everything so i'm going to go to raspberry pi 5 and it says choose operating system and i'm going to click on that one again and i'm going to choose raspberry pi os 64 bit with desktop so this is the very first one at the top I'm going to choose. If you want to choose something else, there are many, many options here. Choose what you want. I really do think that this tiny program that the Raspberry Pi Foundation or the Raspberry Pi people have created is really, really good because it gets people into using this without having most of the technical know-how of ISOs and downloading and imaging and writing to SD cards. It skips all of that. I'm going to go to 64-bit and I would recommend you guys do 64 as well because this means that the system has been optimized to make a better use of a 64-bit processor in theory it should be twice as fast as a 32-bit but it's not going to always be twice as fast it says choose storage i haven't plugged in my micro sd card yet so i'm going to push that into my laptop now and you should hear the connection sound i'm using windows 11 that's my connection sound that's popped up down there as well so that should be connected i'm going to go to choose storage and there we go my raspberry my 63.9 gigabyte sd card has shown up i'm going to click on that and i'm going to simply click on where it says next would you like to apply os customization settings no all data is going to be wiped off i'm sure you want to continue yes and i'm going to leave this it says preparing to write i'm going to leave this for now once this finishes i'll come back and show the following steps
that's everything finished you can now remove the sd card i'm going to click on continue here i'm going to close this program and then i can unplug the micro sd card from my laptop i'm going to show you how to plug it into the raspberry pi 5 and also connect it to the case here is my micro sd card i'm going to pull this out this is my raspberry pi 5 and simply slot this in here like so there's only one way for this to go in so I'll put turn the Raspberry Pi um, this way and the writing of the SD card should be facing you when you push in. You push in, it's not spring loaded. So once you push in, that's it. You shouldn't go any further. You shouldn't hear a click or anything. Now let's try to figure out how to put the Raspberry Pi 5 into this case. So I've never opened this before, never had one before. So this is what the case looks like. There is a fan built in. I'm not sure where that should actually be plugged in. Instructions, let's see what we have. Oh, we have some mounting feet. So to put these on the bottom so it doesn't slide. That's pretty good. So in the box, we have a single heat sink. I'm gonna peel that off. And I'm guessing that goes directly onto the processor there. I always like to apply a bit of pressure on this, but I like to put something at the back so that when I squeeze, my fingers don't damage anything here. So I'm gonna put something relatively flat at the back. I'm gonna squeeze on this a bit, not too hard, just so it makes good contact so that we can cool it properly. There is a tiny fan connector right there. This looks like one of those ones you have in a motherboard for a normal PC. So it looks like there's a lip over it as well. So this fan connection here, if I can show it properly, this is what needs to go onto it. So I believe all I need to do for this is to lift this. Sorry, I'm doing everything through the camera. So it's a bit I'm not getting the right angles I want using my finger to pull this off oh yeah it fell on the ground perfect so then i'm going to plug this into that socket there there are notches on the side that should show you how it should go in so there is a flat side that has no cable and there's a side that has a cable so if i show this let's try and focus this the part on the right hand side has the pins and on here, we have a part with pins and a section without pins. So I'm just gonna turn that this way, pins on the right hand side and plug that in. Something like this. Sorry, this is an awkward way to do this. There we go, it's in, you squeeze it down. There's no click or anything, it's just in there. All right, perfect, I'm in. Then I simply put this on like so. It already has its connectors. It already has its spacings where they should be. Then I connect the bottom of the case. That seems to be it, there's nothing else. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna connect my mouse and keyboard. Actually, it's not gonna be mouse and keyboard. What it's gonna be, is gonna be my USB-C adapter or dock, I would say, connected directly. This is USB 3, but I don't need to go USB 3 because I'm only using a mouse and keyboard for this. Plug that there, it's quite stiff. Make sure it's the right way, yeah, it is the right way. Mouse and keyboard connected to this. And then all I need from here is, oh, that sticks out nicely. All I need from here is my USB-C adapter and my micro HDMI cable. There is one thing I have massively overlooked and I have to come back and address this. There is now a power button on the Raspberry Pi 5. No other Raspberry Pi has a power button. You would normally have to try and jerry-rig this yourself, but there is a power button here on the case, which means that if I take this off and I pull this out, there should be a tiny switch there, which is absolutely wonderful. So let's get cracking. This is a Raspberry Pi 5 on my desk. And as you can see, you might not be able to see properly, there is a tiny red light there. And that came on as soon as I plugged it in. I'm gonna power this up now and see what happens. So I'm simply gonna squeeze that button there. If I can get to it from this angle. Pressed it, the light turned green. Fan has now started spinning. That's the monitor there, let's see what comes up. This is the very first boot. That was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. All right, I'm gonna put this on my tripod.